Today's edition of Tennessee Titans Today is sponsored by Mint Mobile. You may have heard of them, the cell phone plan owned by Ryan Reynolds. Plans start as low as just $15 a month over at mintmobile.com slash chat sports. Tell you all about them and everything they offer later on in today's show. But this video is a look at some Titans on the roster bubble slash cut candidates from the Tennessean. And the number one player on that seven-man list was quarterback Logan Woodside, which I find oh so interesting, given the fact that Woodside, for several years now, has been the backup quarterback, well, feels like several years at least, maybe not quite that long, for a couple years, I should say, has been the backup quarterback for Tennessee, but the first material change in the depth chart has occurred. That is the drafting of Malik Willis. Here's what Ben Arthur of the Tennessean wrote. Quote, Tannehill's backup since 2020, Woodside has warded off every competitor for the quarterback to roll the last two seasons. But he may need an especially strong training camp and preseason this year and or struggles from Willis to convince Tennessee of committing three roster spots to quarterbacks. There are only three QBs on the Titans roster at this point. Tannehill... Woodside and rookie Malik Willis. In a way, this really does come down to the situation involving Malik Willis. If he is ready, if he is prepared, and if he is good enough to be the team's backup quarterback, then yes, they'll make the transition over there and they will only roll with two QBs. If they're not, well, then they're not going to make the move and hand the job to Willis if he's not ready. A lot of this does come down to how prepared Willis is, but as I've said before, patience is needed. I don't think he's quite there at this point. So our first question of the day, will Logan Woodside make the Titans roster? Y for yes or N for no? I want you guys to sound off for me in the comments section. Does he make the team yet again? Y or M? The other of the two offensive players on this list is wide receiver Josh Malone, someone we've talked about before here on Titans Today, and I am very intrigued by if he can make the roster. And I do think, by the way, once again, Ben Arthur is spot on when it comes to Malone's status. Mentioning his showing in minicamp uh, OTAs, but I'll say this, quote, but his limited special teams experience as a back-end receiver may hurt his chances of making the team. He's played just 87 special team snaps in four seasons, 26 games, though 37 of them did come in 2020 with the New York Jets. I do think special teams is critical. In fact, I know it's critical for the back end of the roster. Now, Robert Woods, Traylon Brooks, Nick westbrook Akina going to make this team. I think Racy McMath and Kyle Phillips also make it, at least in part, to special teams value. That's five receivers. If Tennessee carries a sixth, maybe it could be either Malone or Des Fitzpatrick, both of whom don't have a ton of special teams experience. That is one of the more intriguing roster battles to keep an eye out for this year. Malone is back home in Tennessee, a volunteer originally. Didn't do much with the Jets, but has been a winner so far in preseason slash offseason workouts for the Titans as an organization. Let's get to today's pinned comments. I want you guys to name a player who you want to cut. A player you just don't think is worth it that much anymore. I don't think there's nearly the same level of roster competition back end for Tennessee as there are other teams. But I want to hear from you guys. Name a player you want to cut right now at the pinned comment. If the ad break comes on YouTube, perfect timing. Head down there and let me know. Over to defense now. This is safety slash defensive back Theo Jackson, who I've heard some very good things about Jackson coming out of Titans OTA's minicamp, and I am hoping that carries over into the 2022 preseason. Jackson was a sixth-round pick, drew the praise early from Tennessee, so he's got the from Tennessee Volunteers. I got the, the, the local flair to an expect. To an extent, excuse me. Here's what the Tennessean wrote. Six-round picks are never guaranteed roster spots, but Jackson had a strong offseason pr program, particularly at rookie minicamp. Made several plays around the ball and flashed physicality. He seems like a natural replacement for Dane Crookshank in the sub-package defense as a tight end stopper with his size and length. The numbers also bear that out. Jackson, his numbers are almost look more like a linebacker than like a, than a true safety with nine tackles for loss, 11 INTs, one pass breakup, a sack and a half, and 78 tackles. The Titans, in terms of the safety depth chart right now, Kevin Byard and Monty Hooker are going to make this team. I don't see a ton of depth at safety. 
You bring in A.J. Moore, you'll lose Crookshank. I would wager that Bayard, Hooker, Moore, and Jackson all end up making this team. Of course, that is still at least a little bit up in the air at this point, but I do think there is a likely path for Jackson to make this team. So of the three guys so far, I would wonder if outside of Woodside, he's in the best position. Today's show, like we mentioned, is sponsored by Mint Mobile. If you want a cell phone plan for as little as $15 a month, Mint Mobile is your spot. They are changing the game. You might have heard of them. By the way, they are owned by Ryan Reynolds. Head over to mintmobile.com slash chat sports to get premium wireless for as low as $15 a month. That is unlimited talk and text, and you don't have to sacrifice any coverage, speed, or data with Mint Mobile. They run on the largest 5G network. Inflation absolutely sucks. I think we can all agree with that one. It's impacting so many people, and that's why I chose to make, this, to make the switch over to Mint Mobile. Super easy, by the way. Thanks to their digital eSIM cards. You don't have to go to a store to activate your plan. You can do it in seconds from the comfort of your own home. So head over to mintmobile.com slash chat sports to get unlimited premium wireless for as low as $15 a month. You can keep your phone and your number, by the way, if you so choose. I'll put the link, mintmobile.com slash chat sports, in the comments section and in the description of today's show. With the amount of money you're saving, there's really almost no reason not to give it a shot. The defense now, Chris Jackson, the corner. A lot, a lot of defensive players on this list from, from the Tennessean. Jackson has been a rotation-ish piece on defense slash special teams uh, in recent years. He's, he is, after all, fighting for one of those last roster spots at the cornerback position, and I do think this is a good name to have on the ball because, as we talked about before, I love what Tennessee has in terms of depth at corner. Here's what Ben Arthur wrote. Quote, Jackson has been a key rotational piece for the Titans since 2020, but he faces an uphill battle beating out second-year pro Elijah Molden and second-round rookie Roger McCreary for nickelback responsibilities. In Jackson's favor, though, is his versatility and his value on special teams. He played 37% of the snaps there last season, bolstering his case to remain in the 53-man roster. Teams will carry anywhere from five to six corners. Fulton, Farley, Mold, McCreary are roster locks. They are not going anywhere. I do think Jackson is in position to be cornerback five. And McCreary, remember, despite having this, the build of more of a nickel corner than an outside corner, can play on the outside. I think Jackson kind of can a little bit as well. I would say Jackson is likely cornerback five. I think he's safe in terms of the roster, at least not a lock, but on the safe side. Now, most of these positions were defensive, guys, which I found quite interesting on the list. Which side of the ball, right this second, right now, do you believe is better? Type in O for the offense or type in D for the defense. Now, we are asking you once again to make sure your noties are set to all here on Titans Today. Make sure you are logged into your YouTube account slash you have one set up. Click sign in. Make sure you've created an account, fill out your information, then go over to Titans Today, youtube.com slash Titans Today. Click subscribe, and this is the key part. Hit the bell twice. Once to subscribe, the second time to change your notifications from the default of personalized to all. If it's not all, you will miss out on videos from us here at Titans Today. Over to linebacker now, Chance Campbell is next up on this list. This is the rookie out of Ole Miss who I am quite uh, intrigued by on this list, although I think back end of the draft picks certainly makes sense from that standpoint. Tennessee laid out a potential battle brewing in terms of the back end of the linebacker depth chart. And of all the draft picks, Campbell's probably least likely to make it because he was the last pick. 219 overall, the back end of the sixth round. Was productive, though, for Ole Miss. 109 tackles, 12 and a half TFLs, six sacks. Not the best coverage player, but if you're linebacker five or six, that's okay. In the end, what this is going to come down to, common refrain today, special teams. David Long, Cunningham, and Monty Rice, I believe, are roster locks. It's a question of how many linebackers, inside linebackers, do they choose to carry. That is going to be a key thing for the Tennessee Titans. Do they carry four? Do they carry five? How deep do they go at that particular position? It does still remain to be seen. Titans drafted nine players this year, plus they've got quite a few UDFAs. So I want your predictions here. How many rookies 
draft picks and undrafted free agents do you think make the Titans roster? Let me know in the comments section. Next up is linebacker Dylan Cole, and this is kind of the battle that's brewing here, at least according to the Tennessean. They put Campbell and Cole on this list, and I would bet probably not both of these guys end up making the roster, although it is possible if Tennessee wants to go deeper and if Monty Rice's injuries are slower to recover. Cole was re-signed this offseason after beginning his entire career with the Houston Texans. That's not an accident, by the way. The Titans linebacking core in terms of the veterans who are not on the roster, or at least we're not draft picks, are Texans guys. There's some overlap there with the defensive coaching staff. Cole's best year was as a rookie, but has not played a huge role the past four years. His fifth year was his best year way back when with Houston. When he was kind of a surprise UDFA splash player. There is special teams value, by the way, for the veteran. But remember... Campbell's much younger and cheaper, and that matters at the back end of rosters. So hypothetically speaking, if you could only keep one on the team, who would it be at linebacker? Type in CC for Chance Campbell or type in DC for Dylan Cole. Sound off for me in the comments section. One last player, and I got to be honest, I'm surprised he's on there. Haskell Garrett, that is the undrafted free agent because I don't think UDFA should count as roster bubble guys because, well, duh, there are undrafted free agents. They're all fighting for a roster spot if like, the majority of these guys don't do anything in the NFL. Now, Garrett is a somewhat more of a household name having played at Ohio State and coming off his best year uh, collegiately in 2021. Seven TFLs, five and a half sacks. He had a... He, could make the roster, but I think of all the guys on this list, Garrett unquestionably is on the outside looking in. And that's the depth here. Danico Autry, Tyre Tart, Naquan Jones, Jeffrey Simmons, and veterans uh, ish, veterans ish relative to UDFA and Garrett. Lorel Murchison, Deshaun Hand, and Demarcus Walker, I don't think have the advantage over Garrett. So I think practice squad probably a little bit more likely for Garrett than it is making the roster. Remember, folks, if you have not already, Please subscribe. Training camp at long last is just around the corner, and we're going to keep you guys covered with everything going on around the Titans this season.